If you're looking for how and what the full customization capabilities are for the Razer Raiju V3 Pro Controller, this video is for you. We'll review how you can make these customizations to your controller with and without software. Also, I'm not seeing too many talk about it, even Razer. But you might want to return this controller if you don't know this simple nuance. If you don't yet know the Razer Raiju V3 Pro, then take a moment to check out my unboxing and initial review on this controller, then come back and we'll keep chatting from here. Timestamp in the description. If you're already familiar, you know this is a Pro controller for PS5 and PC, and it has few customization options to unlock its full potential beyond its out-of-the-box settings. We're talking button remapping, trigger sensitivity, thumbstick dead zones, and profile management. There are three ways to customize this controller. The PC app, mobile app, and onboard shortcuts. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to use both apps and make those shortcuts, which one is right for your setup, and how to unlock every feature this controller has to offer. Let's get into it. First up, the PC app. This is called Synapse 4. You can download it at razer.com slash synapse-4, link in the description. Make sure your PC meets the system requirements and you should be good to download. Now, I know some of you are wondering about Mac support because they literally show you can download it for Mac here as well. Here's the situation. While Synapse 4 is available on Mac OS, the Raiju V3 Pro is not compatible with Synapse 4 on Mac. Synapse 4 for Mac only supports a limited set of Razer devices, mainly keyboards, mice, and some other accessories. If you're a Mac user, you'll need access to a Windows PC for firmware updates and full customization features like advanced macro creation. Otherwise, use the mobile app to get the majority of customizations. The mobile app is available on both iOS and Android. The official app name is Razer Controller. Why the mobile app matters, PS5 players without Windows, PC access can still customize their controller. It is also great for on-the-go tournament settings or quick adjustments. A perfect companion for console-only gamers. Key differences between the two. Synapse 4, the PC app, allows you to make PC-specific customizations, connect more to the Razer ecosystem, and update firmware. The mobile app gives you essential customization on-the-go and is perfect for non-PC owners or console-only gamers. Let's start with the PC app and connecting your controller to your PC. You've got two options. A wireless connection, use the 2.4 gigahertz USB-A dongle that comes in the box. Plug it into your PC and you will get a maximum of 500 hertz polling rate for gameplay. Or use a wire connection. Use the included USB Type-C cable or any to connect to your PC and you will get a 2000 hertz polling rate max. Regardless of the connection you choose, the customization experience will be identical. When you first connect, Synapse 4 should recognize the controller automatically. Once you see it, click it. Then you'll be taken to the controller customization dashboard. This is where the fun begins. At the top left, you will see a drop down for the four profiles you save to your controller. Also, on each profile, you will see the controller shortcut to toggle to that profile when you're actively using the controller in the wild. To the right of this drop down, you have the three dots that lead you to secondary settings for profile configuration. You can link specific profiles with specific games on your PC. You can rename the profiles to something that's easier for you to remember what it's for. And you can reset back to default. The top middle will display your five configuration tabs, customize, triggers, thumbsticks, power, and calibration. Let's start with the customize tab. You've got six programmable buttons, four removable mouse click back buttons, and two claw grip bumpers. You can remap these to functions as just about any button on the controller. But more than that, you can assign keyboard shortcuts, macros, and system functions. These configuration options are only available via the PC app, not via the controller or mobile app. Let me show you the remapping process in real time. You select the button you want to remap, choose what you want it to do, and you're done. It's that simple. And just a quick note, you can physically remove the back buttons. I want to keep us on track for this video being about the app. So for more on the physical installation or extraction of the back buttons, check out my full review here. Back in the Customize tab, we have a few more configurations. Polling rate, what does it mean? 
This is how often the controller communicates with your console or PC per second. Higher is better for competitive play because it means your inputs are registered more frequently, giving you a competitive edge. Here you can adjust between 250 Hertz and 500 Hertz when configuring wireless and up to 2000 Hertz when configuring wired. Side note, PlayStation only allows third-party controllers to go up to 250 Hertz, but this isn't a bad thing since the top frame rates top out at 120 Hertz for PS5. The module for the D-pad, the Raiju V3 Pro, has an eight-way floating D-pad physically, but allows you here to make it function as a four-way or eight-way, perfect for any scenario. Then they offer a configuration I don't see on many other controllers. That is here with SOCD cleaning. SOCD stands for Simultaneous Opposite Cardinal Direction Cleaning. What does this mean? When you press left and right simultaneously or up and down at the same time, the controller needs to know what to do. Your options are neutral. Both inputs cancel each other out. First input priority. The first direction pressed takes priority. Last input priority. The most recent direction takes priority. No SOCD priority. Both buttons are considered held down. Why does this matter? For fighting games and competitive play, this can be crucial. Most tournament players use neutral to avoid accidental inputs, but platform fighter players might prefer last input priority for quick direction changes. The Razer Pro Hyper Triggers are one of the standout features of this controller. First, there's a physical toggle switch on the back of the controller. One is locked mode. Gives you zero travel distance. Rapid fire mouse click response. Ideal for FPS games. The other is unlock mode. Allows full analog range. Ideal for racing games and adventure titles. But here's where Synapse 4 takes it further. You can switch between analog and digital trigger modes. Adjust the exact actuation point for each trigger independently, and toggle rapid trigger mode for instantaneous inputs. Let me explain how different settings affect gameplay. For analog, your trigger pull will respond from a minimum to maximum range. For digital, your trigger will respond as a yes or no input, no ranges. The actuation point gauge allows you to adjust where that point is. When you enable rapid trigger mode, the response becomes even more immediate. For competitive FPS, this is game changing. The Raiju V3 Pro features symmetrical TMR sticks, that's tunnel magneto-resistance technology. What makes them special is the magnetic field detection. This means anti-drift properties and pixel-perfect precision. Quick mention of the swappable caps, you get short concave caps installed by default, plus tall concave and short dome options in the box. Now let's talk about customization. You can adjust stick sensitivity for each thumbstick independently. Dead zone settings determine how much movement is needed before input registers. A lower dead zone means more responsive, ultra responsive flicks. A higher dead zone gives you more deliberate control and eliminates accidental movements. Watch how changes affect the input on screen. You can see the difference immediately in the visual representation. This is a feature I'm excited to implement more of. You can assign a button to temporarily lower stick sensitivity while held. Perfect for steadying your aim while sniping or for precise movements in high pressure moments. Here's how to set it up. Go to the thumbsticks tab, find sensitivity clutch, enable it, and assign it to one of your back buttons or bumpers. I recommend a back button since it's easy to reach without moving your thumbs. You can adjust how much the sensitivity reduces. Also on the thumbstick tab, you have the ability to adjust circularity and keep the diagonals more pronounced as the default, or you can make it more circular, where it's a more of a smooth rounded motion. Then you have the power tab. This is simply where you adjust the minutes it takes for your controller to fall asleep when wireless. A note here, when connected wireless to the PC Synapse 4 app, it appears your selected power saving setting will be ignored. I have mine set to 15 minutes. In the making of this video, I've had the app open for a long period of time well over 45 minutes to an hour and my controller was still on. So maybe that is intentional for allowing you to customize your controller in peace, or it's a bug. Appreciate a bug in my case. Over time, thumbsticks can shift slightly from center. That's where recalibration comes in. This ensures consistent, accurate input and eliminates minor drift. Here's the step-by-step. -step. Go to the calibration tab. Select thumbstick calibration. 
Follow the on-screen instructions. You'll rotate each stick through its full range of motion. Press the button to finalize. When should you do this? If you notice subtle drift, or you just want to reset stick behavior. I recommend checking in and maybe doing this every few months, especially after heavy use. This is critical, so I'm mentioning again. Firmware updates can only be done through Synapse 4 on a Windows PC. If you're a Mac user or console-only player without access to Windows, you'll need to find someone with a Windows PC when firmware updates are released. Why keeping firmware updated matters is how you get bug fixes, performance improvements, new features, or improved compatibility. Now let's take a look at the mobile app. The app is called Razor Controller on both iOS and Android. Download it from the App Store or Google Play. Now here's something really important about the mobile app connection that caught me off guard. The Raiju V3 Pro doesn't have standard Bluetooth. It only has a configuration only Bluetooth mode for the mobile app. It does not support gameplay. Here's the mobile connection process. Hold the PS5 button on the controller to power it on. Then under the PS5 button, put the controller into pairing mode by holding the function and mic buttons simultaneously until the LED turns from white to blue. Go to your device's Bluetooth settings and pair the controller. Then open the Razer Controller app on your same device. Once you're connected, you're ready to customize. The mobile app gives you access to everything the PC app does, except for a few things. Here are the limitations of the mobile app compared to Synapse 4. At least at the time of this video, firmware updates, PC specific button assignments, keyboard shortcuts, and system functions. But in my opinion, those limitations aren't deal breakers. I think the mobile app has some serious advantages. It's perfect for PS5 players with and without PC access. You can still customize everything that matters for console gaming. Essential for Mac users, since Synapse 4 on Mac doesn't support this controller. Customize on the go for tournaments, LAN events, your friend's house. Your phone is always with you. No need to boot up a Windows PC. For basic adjustments, pull out your phone and you're done. This is kind of a bonus because it's not really mentioned anywhere, but it is a huge quality of life capability most other controllers have yet to implement, especially for those of us that might not have a PC or compatible mobile device, but we still want to get the benefits out of our investment. As I mentioned earlier, there is a third way to configure your controller. This does not require any app or a third party tool. Simply turn on the controller, hold the function button, plus whichever of the six additional buttons you want to remap. Then, when the LED blinks white, click the button you want to assign. After you click, the LED should blink green, then return to solid white. Do that anytime and anywhere while your controller is on, and your current profile will reflect those remaps. Thank you, Razer. This takes me into what I call a few pro tips. When it comes to customizing, don't change everything at once, seriously. Start with button remapping, get comfortable with that, then move on to adjusting sensitivity or vice versa, just test each change in game before making more adjustments. Changing too much too fast will mess with your muscle memory and may do more harm than good. Create game-specific profiles. Here are some examples. COD multiplayer, racing, fighting games, general slash default. Keep one default profile as a backup in case you mess something up or wanna go back to stock settings mid-game. For the sensitivity clutch feature, Assign it to an easily accessible button. I recommend a back button or bumper as it allows your thumbs to stay on the sticks for movement and your fingers to stay on the triggers for aiming and shooting. Gradually reduce and test sensitivity to find what works for you. This feature alone can dramatically improve your sniping game. Are you a PC user, PS5 only? Let me know your setup in the comments and how you're planning to customize this controller. I'd love to hear what profiles you're creating. Want to see this controller in action and hear my full thoughts on build quality, comfort, and gaming performance? Check out my full review. I'll put the card up here and link it in the description below. And if this walkthrough helped you unlock your controller's potential, smash that like button and subscribe for more Gaming Gear Deep Dives. Your support helps keep this content-making wheel spinning. Thank you.